Okay, so welcome to part five of natural language processing in Python. In this video, we're gonna cover stemming and lemmatization. And just before I get into the uh, video here, I just want to mention, as I usually do for every video in this series, there is going to be a blog post for every video in this series. So every video has a corresponding companion blog post and this one will as well. Blog post will just go into more detail into the content of what I'll cover in this video. And also there will be a link in the description as well to where the code is for this video. So it's not uploaded at this moment, but there will be an NLP5 underscore five file. Actually, I think if I just refresh, yep, there it is. So the uh, this will be the file that will correspond to this video, which has all the code that I'll be writing. So you can just sit back, relax, watch it, and then just copy and paste or clone this repository and follow along that way if you wish. So with that said, let me minimize that and we'll get started with this video. So as I mentioned, we're going to be covering lemmatization and stemming. So let's start off with this concept of stemming. So as usually, uh, as usually, oh God, as usual, this is natural language processing, get it together. Uh, stemming, right. So Wikipedia has a good article on this if you want more information. I'm just going to give you the uh, kind of the Wikipedia definition of this term. So it says stemming is the process is the process of reducing inflected or sometimes derived words to their word stem, base, or root form, generally a written word form. So that definition's not really, um, I think, very clear. Uh, perhaps it is if you're in the midst of this field, but uh, if you're just kind of getting started on this, it's not very, uh, it's not a very clear definition to me anyway. Uh, but let's go ahead and step through an example to see if we can figure out what this means and how we can actually stem words in NLTK. Uh, so let's take a bit of an example here. So we'll consider the word fishing. So fishing, uh, we can consider the so-called stem of this word as fish. Fish is kind of the, um, it's not quite the root, but it's the stem of the word fishing. Likewise, if you have fisher or fished, uh, these words, the, the stem of these words as well is also the, the stem fish. So we can Indeed, we could write our own function if we wish to. This isn't necessary, especially with NLTK. We could write our own function to determine the stem of a word uh, by doing some sort of a process of eliminating things like ER or ING off of a word to try to get to the stem of it. However, there are many edge cases uh, for certain words. So NLTK, at NLTK provides to us um, sort of a nice way of eliminating these edge cases because the people who programmed these stemmers or who came up with the infrastructure behind the algorithms for these stemmers uh, spent a lot of time as to how to overcome these obstacles. So you can write your one your own, but it's probably not advised, especially with NLTK um, tools at your hand. So what are the applications? Why might you want to stem words in natural language processing? So uh, I'm just highlighting this part here. This also comes from Wikipedia. So it says stemming is used as an approximate method for grouping words with similar basic meanings together. So they give an example. If you have a text which has the word daffodils in it, so the type of flower, it's most likely related to a text that mentions daffodil, which is just the non-plural form of daffodil. So if you have two different texts that mention these two forms of the word, if you stem that word, you will uh, that will come down to the same stem, which in this case is daffodil. And you can probably ascertain that there may be some um, you know, core shared meaning between the two documents due to the shared stemmage of the word. Uh, however, they do give another example here where in some cases this might not be quite what you want. Uh, words with the same stem have idiomatic meanings, which means uh, which are not closely related. So an example they give here are, uh, you know, a user searching for the term marketing. Uh, this won't satisfied, uh, will not be satisfied by most documents mentioning markets, uh, but not marketing. So there's obviously a bit of a, a difference with uh, that term there. So let's see, what's an application that's maybe more well known? Well, an application that's more well known is Google. So anytime you search, let's say for the word uh, fish or fished in Google, Google's able to ascertain that, okay, um, whether you search fish or fished, Google's able to determine based on the stemmage of the word that these uh, search results are most likely related and uh, will, will most likely be of use to you if you've searched one of those two words.
Um, so let's see. So let's actually get to how we can stem certain words using algorithms provided via NLTK. So one of the main uh, stemmers that are provided is the Porter stemmer. So this is based on a uh, paper which is I think either from the 70s or 80s. I've linked it above there. I'll also link to it in the write-up as well. Uh, and this is kind of one of the uh, I guess main one of the mainly used stemmers uh, in, in natural language processing. So the way that we can make use of this is to first import it. What we can do is say from nltk.stem import the porter stemmer. This is a class. And the way we can make use of this is we can define a object variable called porter, set it equal to porter stemmer. And then let's, um, let's run the stemmer on this word list here. So I've come up with a word list of the following words, connected, connecting, connection, connections. And then I'm going to run the stemmer on this list of words, and I want it to tell me what the stem of these words are. So that's what these two lines here do. We're just looping through every word in that list. And then I'm saying, give me the stem of each of these words. So let me go ahead and run this file here. And so we see that each um, word in that list was able to come up with the stem connect. So for every one of those words, the porter stemmer was able to figure out the root, uh, sorry, not the root, the stem of the word is connect. So let me just comment this out here and we'll move on. So it generates uh, or it identifies connect as a stem for each of these words. But let's take a look at another word list where uh, here we have argue, argued, argues, arguing, and argus. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can run the porter stemmer on this word list as well and see what we get. So in this case, it gives us uh, the same stem for each of these words. It's not a word, it's A-R-G-U. You might assume that it should be argue. Again, this isn't the root word, this is the stem of it. So this is the uh, this is the stem that the porter stemmer is going to give for um, any of these words. They all come to the same stem, but it, they might not be, uh, like let's say A-R-G-U will not be found in the dictionary, uh, as far as I know. So uh, this just kind of elaborates on what I was trying to say, is that the root stem and uh, sorry, the term stem and root are independent. So the word argue is the root word of the above word list, so A-R-G-U-E. But according to the definition of stem, the term A-R-G-U is the stem. So we just uh, mentioned very briefly that Porter Stemmer, uh, going into detail on how that works, is certainly beyond the scope of this video. I will mention there are at least two other stemmers that are provided via NLTK. One is called the Lancaster Stemmer and the Snowball Stemmer. Basically just going over these so you know that these tools exist and that if you wish to make use of them, you can. Uh, and you can access their functionality in much the same way that we did for the Porter Stemmer. So these two lines here, I'm just creating objects that correspond to each of their uh, respective classes for these stemmers and then we can uh, do a similar thing where we run these we run a loop over the word list in this case for argue and we can check out what each stemmer determines the stem for each of these words uh, to be so we can run both of these loops one uses the Lancaster stemmer the other uses the snowball stemmer so running that uh, it looks like it's a little bit hard to see here because I'm not really separating these two things out. So I'm just going to print a new line here so we can actually distinguish which one is corresponding to which. Right, so the top uh, five are the stems according to the Lancaster stemmer and the bottom five are the ones according to the Snowball. So let me go ahead and uh, comment these things out. So each of the stemming algorithms provides different output and depending on your needs, one stemmer may be preferable to use over another. And as I mentioned before, going into detail into how each of these stemmers work algorithmically is um, quite a subject. So it's this the purpose of these videos is more or less just from a use, usage perspective. So if you need to stem words, if you want to kind of get a high level view of what stemming is all about, um, that's what we're covering here. If you want uh, a little bit more information as to when you might use any of these stemmers. Uh, there's a very good Stack Overflow post that is, uh, let me see if I can pull it up here, that is written by, uh, let's see, Slater Tyrannis. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, uh, but there's a question asked here on Stack Overflow and he gives kind of a breakdown as to when uh, you might use each of these and also what they're particularly good at, uh, kind of a little paragraph synopsis on each of these. So he, he mentions the Porter, Lancaster, and uh, Snowball as well. 
and gives, I guess Porter 2 is also Snowball, it's synonymous with that. So he gives a bit of a breakdown as to when you might uh, use those. So I provided a link there if you wish to consult that further. So a related topic to stemming is lemmatizing, and I'm going to also read to you the definition that Wikipedia gives and provide a link as well, just so we kind of get the Wikipedia definition of what this term means. So Wikipedia says that this lemmatization is the process of grouping together the inflected forms of a word so they can be analyzed as a single term, uh, sorry, as a single item identified by the words lemma or dictionary form. So again, a bit of a uh, hard to interpret definition if this is not your field of study. It's not really, uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard to parse. So let's actually go through some examples and hopefully that will make this uh, notion a little bit more clear. So as I mentioned, lemmatization and stemming are somewhat, you know, they're related, uh, but they're different. And the key difference is that a stemmer operates on a single word without knowledge of the context uh, and therefore can't discriminate between words which have different meaning depending on the part of speech. So lemmatization is really key because it allows you to leverage, um, you know, to distinguish the part of speech that you're considering. So let's go ahead and consider some examples uh, of words that we can levitize. So just like for stemming, we can import something that NLTK provides to us. We can say from NLTK.stem import WordNet Lemmatizer. You'll recall from the previous video where we covered WordNet, uh, that term should at least be familiar to you. Um, nothing we're going to cover in this video will, I guess, go over any more properties of WordNet, but if you're wondering where this term WordNet comes from, just consult part uh, four of this series. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable which we'll call lemmatizer to be an object of this class wordnet lemmatizer. So this uh, class, there's a function, a class method which is called lemmatize and that's what we're going to run on uh, a word. So, and we can also specify the type of speech for which that word uh, we'd like to consider. So let's try to do this for the word bats. So by default, if you don't specify a part of speech, uh, the word net lemmatizer will assume that you're referring to the word as a noun. So right now we're going to print out the lemmatization of the term bats. And it's going to assume that we mean the term bats, like for instance, maybe the mammal or like a baseball bat. And so what lemmatization does in this case is it says, okay, the, the lemmatization of bats is just the term bat. So again, considering it as a noun. So that seems to make sense. So let me just comment that out. So it correctly identifies the plural as the singular, as the more general lemmatization of that word. But we can also consider bats uh, as a verb, right? So to bat something around. So we can tell uh, NLTK, we can say that we want to consider the lemmatization of the term bats when the part of speech is considered to be a verb. So the way I've done that here, it's the same line of what we saw above, only now I'm saying POS for part of speech is equal to V, which is recognized as a verb. So if I run this, do it again, I'll get the same thing because the lemmatization of also the term to bat something around, bats around, is also bat as well. But let's do something a little bit more uh, interesting. Let's consider the word better. So if we want to lemmatize this word, better can be, the term better can be thought of as an adjective, an adverb, a noun, and a verb. And in fact, let me just pull up here. Um, if you Google the term better, so what I've done here is I've just, uh, let me scroll up here. I've Googled the term better, and then by default, uh, Google kind of gives you this dictionary um, output of this and so better can be cons can be considered as an adjective it gives you an example sentence uh, as an adverb so if you scroll down here as a noun um, as an adjective it can also be considered as good let's see so we, we can also as an adverb uh, well the comparative adverb is better uh, so it gives you a lot more information there and some of that information will come through when we lemmatize the words so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lemmatize the word better as an adjective, so that's for a uh, part of speech is equal to A, an adverb, part of speech is equal to R, a noun, which would have just been the same as by default, and also as a verb. So if we run lemmatization on better which e with each of these parts of speech, we'll see that as an adjective, it goes from better to good, from an adverb, from better to well, and then for noun and verb, we get better and better. So. This is um, more or less just a very brief overview of stemming and lemmatization. Um, lemmatization appears to be something that is, 
I guess, more widely used for practical purposes. Stemming is certainly something that should be, uh, you should be aware of, especially given the overlap between lemmatization and stemming. Um, both of these subjects are quite deep. And as I've said before in this video is that um, some of these concepts are probably beyond the scope of this video because we're more going for how to make use of these things in Python. So with that said, I'm going to end the video there. Uh, if you want more information on this, as I mentioned, the link in the description below will take you to the write-up, the blog post, and also the code that I'm using in this video will also be provided there as well. So thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.